In announcing broadcasts, I've heard a lot of great music. It's early in the morning, about a quarter to three. Um, my name is Liam Scully. I work at the world famous Discovery Records, emporium of fantastic plastic circular things that we play lots of and enjoy. A, a compilation on CBS called The Rock Machine Turned You On. He was X Ray Specs. The album by Tapazuki. This wacky BBC sound effects one, and he had kind of laser guns going off. Uh, my first experience was coming here on a chance encounter, coming in the door and going down there and, um, and Liam offering me a cup of tea and me and him talking about if there was ever a nuclear explosion that this is where I'd come. My first experience with the Discovery was being interviewed by the, the then boss, um, Morris Hunting, or being interviewed by the back of his head, I never actually saw him. It was just a voice that came from the front of his head um, telling me to come in the next day. That was my interview. So uh, and I, I'd only gone there for a couple of weeks summer work while I was at art college and um, I never went back to college. And 47 years later, I'm here inanely gabbling on about music. I found a treasure house of music. The originals of the finest records ever made by Victor. It's got a lot more in it at a reasonable price and it's friendly. You know, people make you a cup of coffee, people chat to you. It's not it's not just a business, it's it's what people love. Music and vinyl. So. It's just the atmosphere you get here. It's I mean it's palpable, especially on days, you know, like Saturdays or you know, you know, we've got a record store day coming up. You can definitely just feel it in people like Liam. I mean, he's a saint and you know He's the oracle in my eyes, and I think he contributes to that. The internet, maybe communication, there's a lot of fads to do with it. You know, people think it's a hip thing to walk around with an album and a bottle of water. They did, I mean, they did a lot of adverts you see on the telly now. I mean, it, it, for every, everyone's playing the vinyl player now. So, I suppose they are a lot of younger people do spend a lot of time in front of the telly and they do see it and they probably in their mind go, I said parents, what, what, what is that? And parents hopefully try and explain to them what it is and then they come in and then they try and experience it. So. Because I think we are traditionally a, a fantastic independent record shop, I think we're, we are, we're human as well, I think we communicate with people where we make great tea and coffee, we offer them free biscuits and cakes and if uh, that normally brings them back and uh, we do incredibly fantastic discounting, come down and get, a, get lots of money off LPs but, um, but I think we're just a unique shop and I think, um, I think the friendliness and the warmth uh, and I think our shop has just got a unique vibe to it that a lot of the shops haven't got. feel when you step in the shop it's like you've stepped back in time, you know, it's not a um, Clinically, you can have a discussion with the staff mm. about a particular artist or type of music. You know. and that's what makes it special. You know, it's got a buzz. It's the various music styles that we actually have in stock that makes the shop. And if we can't, if we haven't got it available, we can get it for you. Morris Hunting was the original uh, guy who um, started the shop way back in the early 50s, about 52. Uh, a man who had great love for music, particularly um, early jazz. So he would have been collecting, he would have been collecting and selling pre pre vinyl. He would have been collecting what was known then as shellacs, which are the original 78s that preceded, um, you know, the, the, the plastic versions that we're all familiar with now. So he would have been just buying bits and bobs and his love like all our loves in music obviously prompted him to start his own little store 
I think initially he was just, he was working probably, I believe, um, over a shop at Roundabout would have been maybe where Marks and Spencers are back, back in those days and then he, he managed to um, acquire some premises in um, Her Street which is just down the road from where we are now. Um, that would have been early 50s. And then we moved to the, where the discry is now, which is in Bromsgrove Street in the early 70s. So, uh, so he certainly left a fantastic yes. legacy and um, you know, I, th I think we must be one of the oldest you know, independent shops still going. So, um, and, and that's great credit to him really, you know, he obviously started a, a brilliant shop you know, and we're, we're kind of happy to continue that legacy really. You know. I think one of the main reasons people come back to this shop, and this is me included, is because of Liam. I think, I think he's a big, I think he's a big focal point in all this. I, I can't imagine ever coming into the disc in the first place and him not being here because he's just been such a, just massive part of it. Of course, he's done, you know, forty plus years, um, and it's and it's almost like he's took me under his wing, almost like that's what it feels like as well. And um, he just gets it. He just gets it, and and he's always in that wonderful mood, and you know, you know, and he's got the same mindset as me, and I think that's what makes us click. And you know, for a man, you know, for a man to be that energetic every day, I don't know how he does it, and you know, whatever he's got on his bedside table, that's what I want. You know, wherever you are around the world, you know, um, I would say go and find a shop, go and, go and experience some vinyl. You know, if you haven't, if you haven't already done that, if you have, then obviously keep doing it, and. Uh, wherever you may be and if you ever find yourself in Birmingham um, please come in and uh, say hello you know um, we would love to see you. the future is so bright that I'm gonna wear shades that's how bright the future is for vinyl